students, families, friends, faculty, and staff. Thank you for tuning in to this celebration. I'm Marcus Schantz. I'm the president here at Conrad Grable University College, and I'm honored to welcome all of you to Grable's 2020 virtual convocation ceremony. As all of you know, Conrad Grable is affiliated with the University of Waterloo, and all of our students are University of Waterloo students. And for most of you, your degrees have already been conferred by the university, either at spring convocation or just yesterday at fall convocation. Now, for our Master of Theological Studies students who receive a joint degree from Grable and uh, the University of Waterloo, there's a twist. By a quirk of university governance, I'm conferring part of your degrees on behalf of Grable today. And the university has already partly conferred your degree. And trust me, by the end of this broadcast, you'll have a complete degree where all the parts fit together. For everyone, this is a day to celebrate all of the hard work that's gone into your degrees, the hours of study, pounding out essays and papers, the labs, the capstone projects, the recitals, and the exams. Normally, when I do this convocation speech in a big hall with lots of people present, I make a point of telling everyone that it's okay to be joyful and to make some noise at this event. Today, I'll just encourage you to use the live chat to cheer on your friends and your fellow graduates. There's never been a year like this one in living memory. You're graduating into a world that's anxious and fearful. The future for all of us feels uncertain, and we strain to find our hope and our optimism. I think I speak on behalf of everyone who works at Grable when I say that one of the main things that gives me hope and optimism for the future is you, all of you. I've gotten to know many of you a little bit over the past few years, and I know that you want to do more than simply have good careers, build reputations, and make money. You're interested in applying yourselves to the challenges and problems of this world to make the world a little better place than you found it. You're creative and you're collaborative and you're committed. It's been an honor for all of us at Grable to spend the past few years with you. I found a poem that captures the spirit of today and I think that catches some of your spirit as the graduating class of 2020. It's called A Prayer Among Friends by the American poet John Daniel. I'd like to share it with you. Among other wonders of our lives, we are alive with one another. We live here in the light of this unlikely world that isn't ours for long. May we spend generously the time we've been given. May we enact our responsibilities as thoroughly as we enjoy our pleasures. May we see with clarity, may we seek a vision that serves all beings. May we honor the mystery surpassing our sight. And may we hold in our hands the gift of good work and bear it forth whole, as we were born forth by a power we praise to this one earth, this homeland of all we love. Welcome again to Convocation 2020. Our guest speaker for this year's Convocation is my friend and colleague, Dr. Wendy Fletcher. Dr. Fletcher is the principal of Renison University College, one of our neighbors at the University of Waterloo. In addition to her administrative role, she's a professor of religious studies and social work, and her scholarly work includes the history of race and racism in Canada, the intersection of Christianity and culture, and the history of colonization and its impact on Canadian First Nations. Through this work, she's developed special relationships with a number of First Nations and has been adopted into two of them. She's also an ordained minister of the Anglican Church and an accomplished visual artist. Her most recent work explores the connections and communications between Confucian, Western, and Indigenous cultures. She's an excellent colleague and a friend to the college. I'm grateful that Dr. Fletcher will deliver our convocation address today. 
Greetings, dear friends of Conrad Grable. It is my deep delight to bring you a welcome and congratulations from Renison University College on this, the occasion of your fall convocation 2020. 2020. What a year for you as this year's graduates to be facing toward the world. With all that you have learned and in the many ways you have prepared to offer yourself now into the world, you turn and you are faced with the challenges of a year unlike any other. 2020, it is, we know, the year of an unbefore in this generation unprecedented pandemic, global pandemic. And all around us, people are afraid, they are anxious, they are uncertain. Never for this generation has the global future been so uncertain, but this, this is your year. Into this year, 2020, we also see in our own North American society, turmoil and turbulence that is of a very particular kind. We are being confronted with the reality that the deeply embedded systemic racism of our histories are no longer to be tolerated are no longer to be assumed as normative. It is a day of ferment and social change where society is calling out for a new day, for the overturning of an old way and the beginning of a new way. 2020, this is your year. This is the time to which you have been called. It seems terrifying. The anxiety and the uncertainty and the challenge of these unknown days which lie ahead. But as I think of that, as I contemplate the future to which you are going, I'm reminded of a passage from the Hebrew Bible. It's in the book of Esther. Complicated, very complicated story, the story of Esther. But there's a line in that story, 414. And in that story, Esther, who is a young Hebrew woman who has been called by God to save her people, is in the middle of a disaster and of turbulent times and everything is at risk. And Mordecai, her uncle, says to her, well, perhaps, perhaps, dear Esther, you have been called for a time such as this. It's you. Dear class of 2020, it's you. You have been called to take your newly minted education and your heart's big as a universe, toward the world. As midwives of the new day, this is your time. You have been called for just such a time as this. As I contemplate the challenges which lie ahead of you, I am reminded of another Waterloo grad from some years ago, a young man who I came to know quite well. He was an engineering student at the University of Waterloo. He was also a Christian. He, with his whole heart, wanted to take his engineering education and offer it to the world. He wanted to make a difference. He wanted to do something concrete that would make the world a more livable place for the people who were in it. So he joined up with an international development agency, a small agency that was working in the South Sudan. He graduated and he went off to the South Sudan for his first assignment. His first assignment was to build a bridge. He and two other young men were sent to this small village in the South Sudan where there was a difficulty. On one side of a great gorge, a great steep chasm with a rushing torrent of a river at its base, there was a village which had a school and the possibility of education for its children. And on the other side of the gorge was another village, also with children, for whom there was no possibility of education. And so the project was to build a bridge, to find a way to bridge this chasm so that the children on the side of the gorge with no school could cross the impassable and have the possibility of a future at the school on the other side. Well, he and his colleagues were very excited. They knew how to build a bridge. They knew how to build a bridge in this kind of context. They were sure they could figure out how to do it. They sent in their plans to the head office, and then they were told there's not enough money for that project. Well, yes, that was a bridge that could work, but there was not enough money for that bridge. If they couldn't figure out another way, there was no bridge. Well, my young friend fell into a, a deep despair. <laughs> his education, he knew how to do it, he was there, he was with the people, he saw their hope, he wanted to help them, the elders were trusting them to help them figure it out, and there was no way. There was nothing to be done because 
there wasn't enough money. He fell into a deep depression, a despair. And then he remembered. He remembered one of those courses he had taken at the University of Waterloo. It was for a breadth requirement, nothing to do with engineering. It was a course in medieval literature. And in this course in medieval literature, he recalled having studied a play called The Life of Any Man, translated for today, The Life of Any Person. And in this play, Satan was the central character. He was not the Hollywood type of a saint. He, he was an ordinary person, just like you and I. He was an ordinary man. And in this play, the stage was set with scene after scene of human suffering. The plague, wars, violence, cruelty, sickness, every kind of suffering you could imagine for the humans in the 13th century. And into every scene of human suffering, Satan walked. And in this walking from scene to scene of human misery, he had only one line. This was his line. He went up to the humans in the middle of their suffering. He touched them gently on the shoulder and he said, oh, I'm so sorry. There's nothing to be done. Nothing to be done. The young man realized, aha, he remembered the meaning of that medieval morality play that he had learned so many years before, which was this. If we despair, if we give up, if we are paralyzed by fear, uncertainty, lack of resources, any anything, if we are paralyzed, if we are seduced into believing that there's nothing to be done, then the darkness wins. The force of death overpowers life and the intention of God for this earth steps back. So he stepped forward. He went to his colleagues and he said, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. We have to do something. There must be something we can do. They put their minds together. They talked with the elders. They thought of everything they could have, and they came up with an idea. They came up with the idea for a zip line, a zip line, a strong, safe zip line. They could afford that. They talked to the elders. The elders were nervous. This was their children sending them off across the zip line. The young engineers were certain they could make it secure. It would be okay. It was what they could do. And so the elders decided with them they would do it. They would take the risk of this because risking their children's future on the zip line opened up the possibility of a future for those children while leaving them on this other side of the ravine left them nowhere. And so they did it. They built the zip line. And the villagers, in great courage and love, embraced their children and sent them to the villagers on the other side of the chasm each day where they learned and where the possibility of becoming something new for each of these children was born. And at the end of each school day, the villagers on the other side sent in great love these children back to their elders. And so it went. And the future unfolded for this village and for the children. There is something to be done. As you turn toward the world, class of 2020, I encourage you, as with my young friend who graduated from this university some years ago, to never forget there is always something to be done. This is your time. You are the ones who are bringing to the world that something which can be done. I'm reminded of a Hasidic tale. You may know the Hasidim. It's a Jewish tradition born in the 19th century. It's, it's a very moving story, but it helps clarify for us what we are about as we head towards the world now, class of 2020. It clarifies for us. In this story, we see a young man whose name is Zuzia. His whole life, he's wanted to be a rabbi. As a young boy, he learned at his father's knee. His father, his grandfather, his older uh, brother, they were all rabbis. All he ever wanted to do was be a rabbi just like them. So he studied Torah. He learned the law. He practiced. He prepared. And he was a rabbi. The day came, he was a rabbi. He was out there in the world. He was looking after his synagogue, his congregation. It was midlife. And he fell into despair because he realized he was not anything like the rabbi he thought he would be. He had such hopes for who he would be, but he was not that rabbi. When the people brought him their pastoral problems, he wanted to shake them. Say, oh, come on, man, just get on with it. Get on with it. You can, you can move forward. Get on with it. When he went to pray, half the time he fell asleep. And when he went to preach the Torah in synagogue, half the time the people fell asleep. 
So he went to an elder rabbi and he said, oh, my heart is broken. All I ever wanted to be was a rabbi. And I'm such a disappointment. I am nothing like my father, my grandfather, my brother. I, I feel like such a failure, even though I want this. And I'm trying so hard. The elder rabbi listened to Zuzia and he, he said to him, oh, Zuzia, don't you understand when the Messiah comes, you will not be held accountable if you were not your father or your grandfather or your older brother or Moses or Abraham or any of the prophets. You will not be held accountable for that. You will only be held accountable if you were not Zuzia. God has created each one of us with a unique and beautiful design. The image of God at the center of each one of us and only one just like you, dear graduate of 2020. There are works, there is a work, there is a way which only you can make and which only you can offer by grace. The challenge for each one of us as we face towards this unimaginably difficult time is to be who God created us to be, to offer to the world ourselves. You are graduates of Conrad Grable. You know about making peace. You know about making music. You know not only about justice, but about beauty. And what else does the world of this moment need but peace, justice, and beauty imprinted in you, rising in you, empowered through education in you, is the possibility of this world encountering those absolutely essential elements of well-being with you by the grace of God. So beloved graduates of Conrad Grable 2020, we send you now, go to the world, go and build peace, go and be peace, go and make music, go and be music. But most important of all, Beloved graduates, go and be you. It is for such a time as this that you have been made. It is for such a time as this that you have been called and sent. You have, by the grace of God, what the world needs for the future God intends. Stay well. Be well. Be you. Greetings. I'm Troy Osborne, and as Dean of Conrad Grable University College, it is my honor and privilege to present to you the students who received University of Waterloo degrees during virtual ceremonies in June or October of this year. Students, during your time here, the Grable community has come to know you and value your ideas, your talents, your passion, and your dreams. We have seen what you have achieved over the course of your time with us, and we would have hoped to have celebrated all your accomplishments enthusiastically in person, but we live in interesting times. I'm glad that we've had the opportunity to come together virtually to offer you our heartfelt congratulations and best wishes for the future. So let us begin by honoring the undergraduates who received their University of Waterloo bachelor's degrees at one of the virtual convocation ceremonies in June or October. As is the Grable tradition, we have invited them to tell us very briefly about their future plans. They are from all the faculty of the university, arts, applied health sciences, engineering, environment, mathematics, and science. Many of these students were part of the Grable residential community while studying at the university, whether living at Grable or associating with the community. Some of the students we honor today were in the University of Waterloo undergraduate programs based at Grable, music, peace and conflict studies, and Mennonite studies. All of you have enriched life at Grable. Thank you.
Hi, it's Isaac Alexander Cook, and I studied environmental engineering. I just finished working on my family's farm for the summer. I'm very grateful for life as an adventure, friends, and the invitation to make a difference in this world. As to what's next, I'm still figuring that out. This is Susan Allen. Seven years ago, I started studying for a bachelor's degree at Grable. Stephanie Kramer encouraged me to do this and to take a lot of music courses. So now I have a bachelor's degree with a minor in church music and worship. And I'm coming back for more. I'm going to upgrade to an honors degree. Hi everyone, my name is Charlotte and I'm now living in Montreal. I'm attending the National Theatre School of Canada for their production design and technical arts program. I'm Haley Bauman and since graduating I started Teachers College at Western University. Hello, I'm Stephen Cholvat, and after graduating in computer engineering, I moved out to Seattle and I'm currently working in embedded software for a small RF engineering company called AR Modular RF. I'm Stephanie Collins and I am a music and business graduate. I'm working full time at Flip as a digital operations coordinator and I'm also working on a couple projects with producers in the music industry. I'm Lorena Diller Harder. I'm taking a year off to work and next year I plan to go to Teachers College. Hi, I'm Marissa Duncan and while I wait for travel to be a possibility again, I am taking my MBA at Laurier and will graduate in August 2021. Hi, I'm Amanda Enns. After six long months of being at home with my family, I finally got a job and moved back to KW. I'm working at a startup called Top Hat Robotics in Kitchener and doing project management and production coordination. I'm Ian Hink. Kat Fowler. I'm going to be starting at Lee Consulting in Toronto. I'm back working at McRae Integration as a junior automation specialist, also in Toronto. Hi, I'm Shan Galt. I'm starting a master's in community psychology where I'm researching fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And because school is currently online, I'm based in Newfoundland. My name is Tiana Gokin. Since graduating, I've been working and taking some time to relax after finishing my undergrad. My next steps include applying for and hopefully completing my Master's of Divinity. Hi fellow grads, my name is Hannah Hill and I've decided to stay put here in Waterloo Region and I'm working full-time in marketing at Brock Solutions. I'm Stefan, I'm working at Lifecycle and I'm looking forward to a life full of more adventures like this one. I'm Briar. I just started a master's from my tent where I've been working doing reptile surveying for the summer. And uh, this master's is through Laurentian and the Toronto Zoo looking at captive breeding of a frog. Hey guys, I'm Connor Huxman. I'm here in Pennsylvania doing my master's in orthopedics engineering design at Penn State while also working part-time for a spinal implants company. So I look forward to seeing you all soon. And depending on how the upcoming election goes, I might be back sooner than I thought. I'm Ben Clausen, and I'm here working for a startup called FAIR in Waterloo. I'm Hannah Clausen, a recent health studies graduate. I've just heard my research-based Master's of Science in Environmental Sustainability at the University of Ottawa, where I'm living with my first year Grable roommate. So thank you, Grateful. Hey everyone, it's Rebecca Lindsay. Over the past couple months, I've been working at a retirement home in long-term care, working in the recreation department, and I'm currently applying to graduate programs. Hey everyone, it's me, Ryan Martin. Seth Rogan didn't respond to my DM, so now I have to narrate this. This is where I live in Toronto, where I moved, and this is where I work at the office at Instacart, but I'm working from home right now, so this is what my day looks like, so please come visit me because it's lonely. Okay, bye. Hey everyone, it's Amy. Um, I'm still living in Waterloo, and I'm working for KW Habilitation in a group home for adults with developmental disabilities. Hi everyone, um, I'm Margie and this fall I started my first year of law school at the University of Windsor, um, but it is all online so I am back and living at home for the year and that's all. <laughs> hey guys, it's Jacqueline McDougall. I'm currently living at home with my parents in Coburg, Ontario. 
I'm also enrolled at Conestoga College and I'm doing online school in the Public Policy Graduate Certificate Program. Hello, my name is Gabrielle McKinnis and I'm currently in my first year of the Masters of Peace and Conflict Studies program. Hi, my name is Eric Moore. Uh, I have just started working at a tech company in Kitchener, working from home currently, after spending the summer working on creative projects. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm at Teachers College at UBC so I can teach your future kids. I'm Charity Nankas, and I'm taking a Master's of Science in Environmental Sustainability at the University of Ottawa. Hey everyone, my name is Aaron H. And this year after graduation, I've started the Paralegal Program at Fanshawe College. Hi everybody, this is Connor. Uh, no, I have not gotten a haircut since the last time you've all probably seen me. <laughs> anyway, I'm at NIPU for Teachers College, and I hope the rest of you are all doing well too. Hi, my name is Aaron. Uh, I graduated from Mechatronics Engineering and I want to do some camping sometime. Cheers. Hi, my name is Jacob Rudy Froze and after I graduate I will be working for a business or organization somewhere around the world. Hey everyone, for those that don't know me, my name is John Shantz. I'm currently finishing up my last term at the University of Waterloo right now, and in the spring, once I've graduated, I'll be joining back at Deloitte full-time as a consultant in the financial services industry. Hey everyone, Alex here, hope you're doing well. Since I've left Grable, I've started at McMaster University in their accelerated nursing program. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do need to sit at my computer like this in my scrubs, but it's still a good time. Miss you all, hope to see you soon. Hi everyone, it's Sarah. After graduating, I decided to pursue nursing and I started school at U of T this September. Uh, even though nursing education looks a little bit different right now, I'm still very excited to pursue my passions and put them to good use. Miss you all. Hi Grable, my name is Michaela Turner and I'm currently working on a Master of Theological Studies. Later, I hope to pursue a Master of Sacred Music and put these two books together. I'm Madison Venice, and since graduating, I've started my Master of Social Work degree at Wilfrid Laurier University. Theo Wiedekerr, I'm currently working on my family's farm. On behalf of Grable Student Services team, Ed Jansen, Rebecca DeYoung, Pam Bartel, and myself, congratulations on the completion of your undergraduate degrees. Thank you also for joining us today in this celebratory occasion. As you are well aware, earning a degree is no small thing. It represents discipline, investment, focus, and lots of hard work. Hopefully there was also a good dose of friendship building and fun along the way too. Whether you lived or associated with us at Grable, or whether you connected to the college as a music or peace and conflict studies student, it has been a privilege to journey with you. Each of you has been an important member of the Grable community. Each of you has helped shape community for yourself and for others both in and outside the classroom. Now, as you live into this next chapter of life, whatever it may hold, may you continue to surround yourselves with strong community, community that helps you embrace life and navigate life's complexities. So again, congratulations, graduates. Every year, the undergraduate graduating class, along with the administrative executive of the college, selects a student to be the undergraduate valedictorian. This year, Briar Hunter was chosen. Congratulations, Briar. Briar came to study life sciences at the University of Waterloo in 2015. While another university had an attractive program, it was Grable that pulled her to UW, and we are glad it did. 
Over the past five years, Briar has been a wonderful community member and has enriched community life for so many people. She has held an array of formal leadership roles, including being on student council, serving as a resident's dawn, and running one of Grable's orientation weeks. Even when not holding a formal leadership role, she was a co-creator of community here from the sidelines with her warmth and her humor and her steady presence. Thank you, Briar, for being willing to give the 2020 undergraduate valedictorian speech for your peers. Let's turn our attention now to her. Hello, I'm Briar Hunter, and welcome, all you laptops, cell phones, tablets, TV screens, and monitors, but especially all you faces behind these esteemed devices. Welcome, and thank you for the opportunity to be sharing some screen time with you today. I cannot express how honored I am to be standing here in front of this video camera as your valedictorian. Usually at a convocation, graduates are on the cusp of a new era foot poised to step into this new season of life, but we've been forced to take that step already or for many of us to stand uncomfortably with our foot hovering in the air as we watched all our plans for the future come to a grinding halt. A pause, a lull. Those who kept moving had to dodge unexpected obstacles like starting a new job remotely. Regardless of whether you felt you were moving forward or not, you were because every day is another step, no matter how minute. We've all progressed into the next season of life simply by finishing our undergrad degree. In her book, Grit, Angela Duckworth describes grit as the quality necessary for high achievement. It is composed of equal parts passion and perseverance. Today, if nothing else, we are celebrating your perseverance. Whether you arrived at university with a passion in mind, found one on the way, or you're still searching, I guarantee no one graduates from the University of Waterloo without enduring at least one nesting season. And this in itself is the pinnacle of perseverance. Now I've spent a lot of time reflecting on first meetings with many of you, first introductions, first impressions, those awkward high fives, hesitant hugs, ridiculous handshakes. Sometimes we can get drawn into the unhelpful habit of looking back and wondering what our life would look like now if. If you'd had a different roommate, if you had sat somewhere different on the first day of class, if you never said yes to that late night pizza run or bought a slice from one of the 10 Godzilla deals ordered every night. If you didn't respond to the call for volleyball or Kurt players, never played beginner hockey. If you didn't play in a talent show or wander down the halls that one night. Sometimes it feels like if we had made one different decision, we may have missed out on some of the deepest, most intentional relationships of our life. But I disagree. Because while that one decision may have sparked it, I think Grable fueled that flame. Grable was the atmosphere, the environment that gently or forcefully nudged each of us into community. We experienced it in different ways and to different extremes, but we all experienced it. If you didn't, I don't think I'd be on your screen today. If not a single person from the Grable community had impacted you, I don't think you would have tuned in again after six months of waiting for this day. Because community is a corporate entity, but it cares for and serves each individual personally. And I hope above all else, you feel like it has. If the postponement of this ceremony provided anything, it was just more time for me to sit lost in thought at all I wanted to say. 
all my praise and admiration for what you've already accomplished, all my encouragement for what I am certain will be extraordinary future endeavors. But I realized in the midst of all this, part of me just wanted to sit in silence with you all. Because a true community doesn't just hype you up and celebrate with you when you achieve and succeed, but it endures all of the long, arduous days and nights leading up to it. True friendship sits with you in silence when there are no more words to say. True support looks like being eager to help in any way, but it does not leave or walk away when there is nothing left to do. It rides the wave with you. And we're still in that wave, aren't we? I won't dwell on this long because COVID-19 has already taken so much from so many. But when I first heard convocation might be canceled, I covered up all my anger and frustration, telling myself in light of those who had lost so much more, I had no justification for being so upset. But I quickly changed my mind because recently through time and conversation spent with many of you, I've learned that we need to learn to sit in our sorrows. We need to acknowledge them and give them the time and space they require. We do not stew in our frustrations, but neither do we ignore the lament arising from the heart. It is okay, it is right to acknowledge what we have lost because we lost a proper goodbye. The chance to be together one last time, share our hopes and dreams for the future, memories of the past, share a handshake, a hug, just a look eye to eye. I confess when convocation was officially canceled, I wept. I sat alone, tears streaming down my face, not primarily for myself, but for each of you, for our community and what we lost, for the lack of a proper goodbye. So I challenge you today to take those goodbyes into our own hands. We have been thrust into a world of virtual correspondence, so use it to our advantage. Use it to keep in touch while we go our separate ways. I'm not saying you need to keep tabs on everyone in this graduating class, because we all know Erin Aish was not planning on staying friends with anyone after graduation. <laughs> but don't let distance be your excuse anymore. Distance is part of our everyday lives now but we still need friendship and support. So make the effort. When reflecting on our university days, one of your fellow graduates shared a report they wrote in 1A, describing the upcoming university years as a difficult mountain to climb. But the purpose was not to summit the mountain, rather it was to learn how to climb. My plan, they said, is not to one day stop climbing, but to get better at it every day. Today, we are celebrating that each of us has learned how to climb. We've persevered and we're still climbing, but we're getting better at it every day. So I leave you with this final message. Please keep all arms and legs inside the vehicle until your racing emotions come to a complete stop. And then please ride once more free of charge down memory lane and allow this ride to launch you into ever greater and more exciting adventures. But make sure your friends are strapped in beside you. I look forward to seeing you on the other side.
The Master of Peace and Conflict Studies, MPAX program, seeks to foster the capacity of students to understand and constructively engage conflict and to advance peace through principled advocacy, effective civil society programming, and dynamic engagement with the state and marketplace. Through interdisciplinary coursework, as well as through experiential learning, MPAX supports the development of students into responsible and reflective agents of peaceful change in local, national, and global contexts. The MPAX program draws applicants from diverse academic, professional, and national backgrounds. It includes full-time students who usually complete their studies in four terms, as well as part-time students who remain with us somewhat longer. Approximately 60% of our students have typically spent a term or more working with civil society organizations or, at times, an international organization. Today's graduates undertook placements not only in the Waterloo region, but also in Switzerland, Kenya, and Zambia, and worked on a wide range of peace issues, including refugee resettlement, peace education for youth, campus ministry, indigenous reconciliation, homelessness, and protection of legal rights around the world. In today's ceremony, we are celebrating the hard work and achievements of 18 graduates who have completed their degrees since Grable's April 2019 convocation event. My faculty and staff colleagues in the MPAX program wish we could be with them in person, but we are grateful that through this online gathering, we are still able to come together and mark a significant passage. On behalf of the MPAX team and the college, I would like to offer the current MPAX graduates not just our congratulations for a job well done, but also our appreciation for their dedication to the goals and values of the program. Advancing peace in the world today requires the combined energies of both the head and the heart, and it has been inspiring to witness the many different ways in which you, our most recent graduates, have worked to bring these complementary human faculties together. May your efforts continue, may they be fruitful, and may you find a path of service that is receptive to your gifts. Hi, my name is Simi Hansra. Uh, after I finish up a small part-time remote job I have at the moment, uh, I plan on finding a full-time job in the GTA and moving there together with my best friend in the near future. Good afternoon. The Master of Theological Studies, or MTS, is a two-year degree that may be taken full-time or part-time. It is open to persons from a range of academic backgrounds and is designed for those who may be exploring vocations of ministry and service, those preparing for various forms of ministry or further graduate study, and those seeking personal enrichment. Students are enrolled in one of three options, coursework, applied studies, or thesis, and complete 16 courses and a public research presentation, or eight courses, plus a thesis, which is defended publicly. 
It is my privilege on behalf of my faculty and staff colleagues to congratulate the 10 graduates of the Master of Theological Studies degree who are being honored today. Four of them completed requirements at the end of April, and thus they experienced only a few weeks of the shutdown as MTS students. We held a small virtual ceremony in June to recognize their achievement around the time they received their diplomas from the university. Others took courses remotely through the spring term or completed and defended theses remotely. The MTS degree is offered conjointly by Grable and the University of Waterloo. And thus, in a minute, the Dean will formally recommend to the President that these degrees be conferred. My ritual involvement in this process would normally be to place the MTS hood over the shoulders of each of the graduates. Though it is not possible to do this virtually, the ritual of hooding is significant because it is very traditional and very personal. It is personal in the sense that I have the privilege of offering my congratulations to each one directly as I place the hood on their shoulders, make eye contact, and offer a handshake. It is also a ritual that makes visible that we stand within the centuries-old tradition of the university, an institution with a deep history of integrating the study of sacred texts, reason, human experience, and the pursuit of human flourishing. Graduates, your accomplishment is deeply personal and also bigger than you as an individual, especially as we see the many ways that you embody wisdom in service to church and society. My sincere congratulations to each one of you. Students in the Master of Theological Studies program receive a conjoint degree from Conrad Grable University College and the University of Waterloo. Today, we provisionally confer the degree with the authority granted to this college. The University of Waterloo will confirm the completion of all degree requirements and will award the degree and present the diploma at the appropriate virtual convocation ceremony. President Schantz, I am pleased to present these candidates to you for the degree Master of Theological Studies. They have been approved for graduation by the Board of Governors of Conrad Grable University College, pending completion of all requirements in their program of studies. By virtue of the authority granted to me by the Board of Governors of Conrad Grable University College and the Province of Ontario, and pending completion of all program requirements, I hereby bestow on you the degree of Master of Theological Studies with the privileges and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations. Stephen Kennedy. Now that I'm graduated, I'm going to continue working with students in Guelph. I am uh, going to spend more time with my son and my wife, and we have a daughter due in November, so lots of fun on the horizon. Hello, my name is Paul Plato. I'm currently on board, on the board of the Emmanuel Bible College, and I am helping them there in various degrees, and also hope to be pursuing uh, some kind of chaplaincy or elder care in the future. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the 2020 graduate valedictorian, Caitlin Folkerts, 
who began her MPAC studies in the fall of 2017, not long after finishing service abroad in Nigeria with the Mennonite Central Committee's Serving and Learning Together program. The fact that she was showing up with the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council Graduate Scholarship and the President's Graduate Scholarship signaled from the very beginning that Ms. Folkerts was ready for big things and keen to pursue serious research. Three years have passed, and it has become clear that these first impressions of Caitlin Folkerts were correct. Caitlin is indeed a first-rate scholar, but there is also much more to her, as grateful faculty and staff within as well as beyond the impacts program test. During her time at Grable, Caitlin was often seen studying in our library or taking breaks to connect with others in the atrium. She made many new friendships and really came to know the place. Consistently, those who became acquainted with her quickly recognized that Caitlin is much more than just another bright graduate student with a sharp analytical mind and an knack for academic writing. She is also a person of high relational sensitivity, strong ethical commitment, and exemplary cultural competence. This past summer, Caitlin was recognized as one of five master's degree level finalists for the University of Waterloo's highly prestigious Alumni Gold Medal Award. This distinction, this distinction places her in the very top academic tier of U Waterloo graduates and was granted on the basis of her overall performance as well as an acknowledgement of her outstanding thesis-length research project, 149 pages, that was based on fieldwork conducted in Haiti during an internship placement with Mercy Corps. During the two academic terms Caitlin spent in Haiti, she conducted research on youth-based groups known as BAS in Haitian Creole, a term that's often transmitted dismissively as gangs. Using open interviews, storytelling methodology, and grounded theory to analyze the data, she developed nuanced insights into the lives and positive agency of Haitian youth who are frequently written off by community leaders as problems or as bonds for political actors. Always careful to share her research in a manner that conveys respect for her interviewees and their authentic voices, Caitlin has contributed significant new insights into the role of youth in conflict and peace. Along the way, she has also received high commendation from those who supervised her internship for the constructive way in which she challenged assumptions behind conventional service to and generated insights worthy of incorporating into future programs. Haitian staff members were pleased by her enthusiasm for learning Creole and by her inclination to form lasting friendships. For these reasons and many more, Caitlin Folkerts has been designated the graduate valedictorian for this year. She embodies the values and ethos of our program and institution, and we are delighted that she has accepted this invitation. Dear MPACs and MTS graduates, faculty, our Dean Troy Osborne and our President Marcus Schantz. My name is Caitlin Folkerts and it's my honor to give this address on behalf of MPACs and MTS grads of the class of 2020. I want to start with words not of my own but of Sufi mystic and poet Hafiz. Hafiz writes, admit something. Everyone you see, you say to them, love me. Of course, you do not say this out loud, or someone would call the cops. Still though, think about this. This great pull in us to connect. Why not become the one who lives with a full moon in each eye, that is always saying, with that sweet moon language, what every other eye in this world is dying to hear. Graduates who are graduating in 2020, I don't even know if I need to say more. In what was for many of us the final semester of our master's degree, our world was smacked by the arrival of COVID-19 and a global pandemic. With social distancing and economic shutdowns and just general disruption to our normal life. And as COVID was exposing holes in our economic systems and the systems we have in place to take care of the most vulnerable. We saw yet another act of police brutality as George Floyd was killed reminding us again that structural racism and discrimination are alive and well, and causing many of us to re-examine our positionality in society, or how our groups and organizations perpetuate or transform injustice. 
Underneath all of this, we were reminded by bushfires and floods that our planet is still groaning under the weight of us using too much. I wish I could tell you with absolute certainty that the skills and mindsets we've gained through our studies in peace, conflict, and theology to connect people, help them articulate and live by their values, put them together in the same place in a container that can hold difference and difficult conversations, to transform conflicts in ways that affirm the needs and dignity of people and communities. I wish I could tell you that in light of our current global situation, where these things are obviously desperately needed, that your job prospects are guaranteed and that you're going to make the big bucks. I'm not sure I can say this. But what I can do is echo the words of environmentalist Dr. David Orr, who said that the plain fact is, this planet does not need more successful people. But it does desperately need more peacemakers, healers, restorers, and lovers of every kind. Friends, maybe you know what your next step is and maybe you don't. But know this, current standards of success cannot yet comprehend the goodness that is already inside of you. I firm firmly believe that on top of everything else you are, you were peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers, and lovers of every kind before you began these programs. And I hope that in some ways your studies, the mentorship and investment of our professors, and persevering and growing through the normal slash awful grad student grad student struggles have brought that out. I hope that in your studies of peace and the divine, that you've been able to see more clearly your own and others' capacity for good and be exactly what the world needs in this movement we're, we're living in. So let me finish with this. It's 2020 and things are topsy-turvy. But Hafez is right. This great pull in us and people to connect, it's still there. We've seen that in the efforts that people have made to be with each other while not being able to see or touch or be in the presence of each other. We've seen it in the thousands of people around the world who have lifted up their voices in loud and resounding agreement that Black Lives Matter. Friends, I believe that our programs have in one way or another made us very good at articulating this need to connect and creating spaces for that to happen. We've learned from some incredible professors and mentors whom we'd like to thank very much. Whether you're paid the big bucks or not, I hope that you don't stop doing this. Never stop wondering and trying to answer that most fundamental question, how do we live well together? You all have something unique and important to bring to that answer. Share it, connect, and congratulations, MPACs and MTS classes of 2020. Thank you.
Let's gather our hearts in prayer. Holy and faithful God, Jesus, our mighty Savior and gracious friend, Holy Spirit, breath of creation, fragrance of love, we praise your name. Thank you for the beauty of this day. Thank you for the work of our students, their lives shared, wisdom acquired, commitments made. Bless them with those things that make life good. Friendship, purpose, kindness, joy. Food, shelter, contentment, and above all, a grateful heart. With thanksgiving, we pray a blessing on friends and family, faculty and staff. May their love return magnified by compassion. May their work return in the beauty of wisdom. Holy guide, help us assert the victory of your love against cruelty and injustice. Help us turn the privilege of learning into joy for doing good. Keep us alert to the needs of your earth and its people so that we might abandon ourselves to the work of your peace. Bless all who have been part of these years we have made together. Bless us this day. May we find comfort and warmth in friends and family. Keep us joined now and always in heart and prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks once again for being part of this celebration. A particular thanks to all of the staff and faculty who were part of this event, to all the students and musicians who participated, and to Dr. Fletcher for her excellent words. You're all invited to join in a sort of virtual reception on Zoom immediately after this service, Links to the reception were sent with your invitation. All Grable graduates have the right to receive the highly prized Grable coffee mug. You should have already received yours by mail, but if you haven't received it within a week or so, please feel free to contact my office. I wish all of you the very best in the next step steps of your lives, whatever they may be. Please stay in touch with us. Goodbye.